Let's talk about troubleshooting in Safeguard. As you always know, things can go wrong and hopefully we have some tools available that we can resolve this. If you select the settings page in your Safeguard appliance, you're going to find some entry that reads diagnostics. If you click on this, you see that there are a couple of tools available. One of them is the ping tool. As you know, you cannot ping the safeguard appliance from an external host to see if it is responsible on the network and properly connected because it just does not respond to that ping. But you can do the opposite way and you can ping external hosts from the appliance. So maybe if you just try to ping, in our case, something like the IMS10 server we have in our network and select the ping here, then it starts to ping and it may come back with the response. And now you see that you have some kind of reply from the host and everything seems to work properly. So all the network connectivity is okay and uh, the response is routed properly. To make this happen, of course, if you see all these IMS10, this I have ended here as the host name, you really know it because this is using DNS. And of course, DNS, as always known, is essential. If DNS will not work, some other things will go wrong inside Safeguard. And to check if DNS is working, there's a name service lookup, a DNS lookup tool available. So if you just enter here something like IMS10 I have used recently, and now it comes back with the address 192.168.6120. That's fine. That's the address it uses. So in this case, I can verify that DNS is working. So far, so good. And there are a couple of other options available here, like trace route or show routes that is used to diagnose uh, about network routing, if everything can be reached, or if your gateways are responsible and if the packages are sent out and coming in properly. Or you can just use Telnet that is used to do a connection maybe to some external system and to see if there are some kinds of ports open. So if, for instance, if we go to the IMS 10, we know this is a Unix system and we're going to go on the port 22. This is the SSH port and we try to connect. Yeah, that should work if we have entered the proper host name. In this case, it's just no such host known. Okay, so we don't know this host. It was a typo, it's IMS 10. And we try to connect. And now you see connection succeeded. So at least you have now proven that the connection is possible on that host on port 22, which is the SSH port. So this is something you can use to poke around if ports are open, if the firewalls are open, and so on and so on. So just the basic stuff we have here in our safeguard appliance. If you cannot succeed, of course, you can always open a support call with one identity support. So that way gonna help you. The usual thing support will do is ask you for a, so something that is called a support bundle. And the support bundle, it's something like some kind of core dump or whatever, a dump of the memory and all, all the stuff that runs in the safeguard appliance. And it's generated in the same menu area over there. And there's something here that reads support bundle. And now you can create that support bundle with a single click and you may select include session lock so that if maybe if you're trying to diagnose session problems or something like that. But you should always uh, listen to the support people, what they tell you, which things to, to include or not, because they really know what they require. So in this case, maybe just have to include the session log and then click on the generate support bundle button. And now the appliance will generate that support bundle and some kind of uh, dialog box will pop up and it will give you the opportunity to store the support bundle somewhere on a, on a server, on your local PC, whatever uh, this client runs on. And you better, you just simply save this and wait until the support bundle is generated. And then you can send in that support bundle to the support team so they can have a look on it and maybe can tell you what, what went wrong. Okay, now the support bundle has been generated. Generating a support bundle may take time, so please be patient. It may run a couple of minutes, so in the end you're going to end up with this uh, file 
in the directory you have selected earlier. It is just a simple zip file. You can unzip it and have a look inside. Maybe we are using 7-zip, open archive. So that's a support bundle. And if you open it up, you're gonna see a couple of subfolders. That means uh, backups, Cassandra, event logs, Pangea, sessions module, VPN, and so on and so on. All this stuff relates to internal modules or internal areas of the product. So the event log, of course, yeah, that's the logging function inside the product. Uh, Pangea is the code name for the safeguard internal uh, functionality. The session module, that is pretty much obvious what it stands for. So this is all organized in a couple of subfolders. And even if you go into, into here, you're going to see much more files that have been uh, collected in that support bundle. The current content of that stuff, it may not be so much interesting to you. It is just meant for our support people. So they, they, they're going to know what, how to deal with that. And as you see, uh, the support bundle is pretty large. So in this case, it's about 1.1 1, 1 gigabyte. So if you are instructed to send it into support or you want to like, you, you like to send it to the support, maybe you have to ask the people if they can supply some kind of FTP service or, or drop area where you can send that data into. Sending by email such a large file maybe is not the best way to communicate with the support team. Okay, but we're gonna instruct you how to manage this.